and welcome to yet another video by IntelliPath. In this video, I will be talking about dApps. But there are some prerequisites to this topic, so with that, let us first see what is blockchain. When some public database is updated and shared in a widespread network, it is called blockchain. Now let us try to break the word blockchain for a better understanding. Block means data here that is being stored in successive groups. And the fact that each of these blocks are connected to a consecutive block, that is each child block has a reference to its parent block, hence the term chain. That leads us to what is Ethereum. In the world of Ethereum, there is an EVM that stands for Ethereum Virtual Machine, which is a single canonical computer. Everyone participating in Ethereum network agrees upon the state of EVM and keeps a copy of the state. In addition, any participant can make a request for computation on EVM. These requests are known as transaction requests. Once a request is made, it needs to get verified from all the participants in order to get executed. As this execution affects EVM state and all its copies throughout the network. Blockchain plays a role in keeping a record of all the transaction requests as well as the present state of EVM, which is again stored and verified by all nodes. Now we'll talk about the Ethereum network and its decentralized nature. The network involving Ethereum is a blockchain platform which is decentralized in nature as it creates a peer-to-peer -peer network for securely executing and verifying smart contract code. Participants have the ability to transact with one another without relying on a trusted central authority. They have full ownership and visibility of transaction data since transaction records are immutable, verifiable, and securely distributed across the network. Now we'll see the definition of dApps. DAPS basically stands for decentralized applications. A dApp is an application that combines a smart contract with a front-end user interface that is constructed on a decentralized network. Smart contracts on Ethereum are open and transparent, just like open APIs. Therefore, your dApp can include a smart contract, even though it might be authored by someone else. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of dApps. Some of the advantages are zero downtime, that is, once a smart contract is published on the blockchain, the network as a whole will be able to serve clients who want to engage with the contract at all times. Next one is privacy. To deploy or communicate with a dApp, you don't need to offer a real-world identity. Next is resistance to censorship. No single organization on the network has the power to prevent users from submitting transactions, establishing dApps, or accessing data from the blockchain. Lastly, we have complete data integrity. Thanks to cryptographic primitives, data recorded on the blockchain is unchangeable. Now let's look at some of the disadvantages. Firstly, we have maintenance. Dapps can be more difficult to maintain because the code and data uploaded on the blockchain are more difficult to change. Next up, we have performance overhead. There is a significant performance cost and scaling is difficult. Next up, we have network congestion. When a single DAP consumes too many computational resources, the entire network becomes clogged. Lastly, we have centralization. User and developer-friendly solutions created on top of Ethereum's foundation layer may appear to be centralized services in the end. 